This conference will now be recorded. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Ann Ortley's Weekly Weather. My name is Ann Ortley. I'm an astrologer here in Boca Ciega Bay, down in Florida. Flew down on Tuesday, um, almost unpacked. Right. Movers haven't brought their stuff yet. 33 boxes, including six boxes of Christmas stuff. Uh, but I am settling in and uh, up and running again, got the computer running, which is always a good sign. Welcome to the weekly weather for the week of December 4th through the 11th. This is an over the bounds, out of bounds extravaganza week. We have Mercury, we have Venus, we have Mars, all out of bounds. We have Pallas Athena, we have Lilith, out of bounds. And so what an out of bounds planet is, is when it goes above or below the declination that the sun travels. Sun goes up to 23, 27, Tropic of Cancer, goes down to 23, 27, Tropic of Capricorn, above and below the equator. And when the planets go past that degree, they're not following the sun's rules anymore and they go to the sun and they do whatever they want. That's why it was a little wild last week. It'll be a little wild this week because we are having an out of bounds extravaganza, which is always a fun time because it encourages us to take an, a chance and look at the world in a new way. All right, so we had the Grand Mutable Cross last week. It is finishing up this week as Mercury leaves and goes into Capricorn and Venus leaves and goes into Capricorn and the sun will be coming into it. So this Mutable Cross of course has Mars out of bounds and it has Mercury and Venus out of bounds. So those th three planets are kicking up. Mars is reporting into Mercury because he's in Gemini. And as he does, Mercury out of bounds is a little wild. Now, Mercury out of bounds is also over the top. Any of us that know Sagittarians with Mercury and Sag, we know that they say things and we know, oh, yeah, that was, what would you say? They say things and they just kind of get carried away. And I often say to the Sagittarian clients I read, you know, it's always really helpful with this placement if you say to someone, so do you want me to tell you what I think? Because most of the time they're going to say no, no. And then you just sit there and raise your eyebrow at them. Mm -hmm. And they know what you think. So Mercury and Sag is frank speaking, frank talking, and also making choices because grand crosses, mutable crosses, are all about making choices. You can see it's a big cross. It's also a big square. And so that we had that last week. We have it this week as Venus and Mercury finish that square, forming aspects to Mars and then to Neptune and then to Ceres. And then they both shift into Capricorn this week. And then the sun comes through because he's in Sag too. He's just moving a little slower. So he comes along and accents these planets and activates them. Uh, so first up, Mercury enters Capricorn here, and we see that happens on Tuesday. Now, when Mercury goes out of Sagittarius, he leaves behind wonderful Jupiter as his boss in Pisces, and he goes into Capricorn, meaning he's now going to be reporting into Saturn in Aquarius. And Saturn, of course, all this year has been building and building and building, and Saturn now is at 20. You can see he's at 20 there. Let me turn on my little... Uh, pointer for those of you who can't follow my mouse as it goes along. Um, Saturn here is a 20 Aquarius, which means he's entering the third decan of Aquarius. So the first decan is Aquarius Aquarius. The second decan is Aquarius Gemini from 10 to 20. And now that he's in 20, he's entering Aquarian Libran. So Saturn's looking to partner. He wants to partner with us. We can see there's a nice big air bar up there, lots and lots of air in the sky. So as Mercury uh, enters into Capricorn, suddenly he's serious minded. He's precise in his communication. He's still out of bounds, but he is talking and he is precise in what he says. So Mercury in Capricorn is a sign that tells you what it thinks. And when it does that, it means it and it doesn't change its mind. And if it does change its mind, it comes back and it says, I changed my mind. Mercury and Capricorn does not ghost people. It tells them exactly what it thinks about them. And Mercury's in a very direct communications format this week, which we're going to see immediately following him entering Capricorn um, when he is sesquiquadrate uh, Uranus on a world point. This is also called sesquisquare. 
So we see Mercury here, and there he is in Capricorn on a world point, and we see Uranus in Taurus also on a world point. Now the world points are where things happen that everybody notices. Can't miss it. So Mercury here in a sesquiquadrate to Uranus is words, announcements, things being said or done that make everybody go, what? What did you say? What? What? Did, what? Did, wow. We also see moon here in Gemini on a world point. It's not really going to be something that can be misinterpreted. <laughs> it's pretty clear what Mercury is saying. And it may be a little shocking. That's fine. But you really want to listen to what you hear when it go when Mercury goes into Capricorn, serious speaking, and then it's sesquiquadrate. Now, Mercury and Capricorn is a handshake deal. These are the people that give you their word and they keep it. They will crawl crawl miles. Analogy I use when someone has Mercury and Capricorn, very literal. And I use the analogy of it's kind of like a dog that goes to the local store and gets you the newspaper and some cigarettes. Every day the dog goes to the local store, brings $10 in its necklace and its wallet on its neck and brings you home the newspaper and the cigarettes. You move 500 miles away. You open the door, you send the dog out because you know there's a store in the corner. Dog goes out to the store, doesn't come back. You go down to the store and the guy goes, nope, no dog came in here. Two weeks later, you get a call from the old neighborhood, from the guy that owned the newsstand. And he goes, you know, your dog just came in here, looked kind of ratty. I gave him the cigarette and the, and the newspaper and he, I couldn't get him to stay, so he left. So now you know the dog has gone all the way back 500 miles. And two weeks later, he's at the front door looking really beraggled, but he's got that newspaper and he's got those cigarettes. That is Mercury and Capricorn. That is what Mercury and Capricorn does. Makes a commitment, keeps it. With its sesquiquadrate, this is stressful knowledge you have to take action on, on a world point. It's very clear. You can't deny it. You can't look at it and go, it's not true. We also have Jupiter sitting right on a world point, right about to go into Aries. And we have Mercury on a world point. So we can expect really big news in the world on Wednesday. And again, remember, we're still dealing with that mutable cross because the sun is moving into it and Venus is in it. So big news Wednesday. So we'll see what happens. It's always fun when we have these big news days and I can say it ahead, hey, watch what happens on Wednesday. It's going to be really exciting. Pay attention. So watch Wednesday. Next up, we have a full moon on December 7th. Now, this full moon takes you back to 1991's new moon in Gemini, which took place on June 7th, and it took place at 16 degrees of Gemini. Uh, and notice Mars out of bounds up there, hanging out on the moon on this full moon. So think back to June of 91, and then think back to... Um, uh, June of 91, think back to Christmas time, December 7th of 90, or not 91, 2021, I get that wrong, back to 21, and then think back to December 7th of 2021, and now we're at the full moon phase, Sagittarius, where we're really seeing it, and we're going, oh, okay, actually, I did that wrong, 1991, oops, let me do that again, back up, and slow down, you're going too fast, this is Mercury out of bounds in Sag, what can I say? All right, so the new moon seeds a cycle that starts in Gemini season, so that's June of 2021. And then nine months later in Pisces season, which is May, no, is March 7th of 2022, we have the opening square. And now we're having the full moon in Sag. And then we will have the closing square next Virgo, September of 2023. So this, and it's Mars and Gemini out of bounds, answering to Mercury out of bounds, of course I'm confused. So this energy of this full moon is very juicy. And you can also see that the angles for DC are world point, same as the day before when the Mercury was forming a sesquiquadrate to Capricorn or to, uh, to uh, Uranus on a world point. So this full moon energy is very potent. And of course, the sun is in Sag, answering to Jupiter on a world point, 29 of the Pisces, the mutable signs, is right before zero. So again, a very big and important day 
you know, in terms of seeing things and understanding it clearly. And we see that this moon has, a, you can see in there, a little mystic rectangle in there, which has an element of fate. And we know that Pallas Athena and Lilith are out of bounds and they are opposite the Pluto, right? So this has got a power struggle component to it. And of course, Mercury does rule the railroads, railroads. Uh, and we are, you know, the Congress uh, passed legislation, uh, the House and the Senate both passed legislation to avert a rail strike. We'll see if it actually happens because this may be, yeah, we're going to do it anyway. We'll see what happens. This is, um, you know, because Mercury rules transportation and communication. Still out of bounds, still in a stressful, unusual action taking energy to Uranus on a world point in Taurus. So Taurus, of course, is food and trans and, and how things travel and change. So it's a really interesting thing to be having the day before of the full moon or earlier and actually in the day of the full moon. We have this this thing, this sesquiquadrate. Uh, so full moons, think back to um, June 7th. Oh, I'm going to get it right this time, 2021. And March 7th of 2022, and now the full moon, and then the story continues next September. So it's, it's a biggie. Next up, we have the sun forming a mutable T-square. Now remember, there's Ceres over here, but the sun is not close enough to be squaring Ceres because she's moving along too, but eventually he will square her. But right now, he's forming this mutable T-square with an opposition to Mars in Gemini out of bounds. And that happens on the 8th, on Thursday. So there's an energy here where the charts square to Neptune. Neptune is on a world point. Neptune just stationed to go direct this weekend on Saturday. And Neptune is also back at the point it was at on April 12th of this year when Jupiter and Neptune met up and said, what do you want to do for the next 13 years? And you said, well, I think I want to do this. And they were like, okay, let's go do that. And so that energy is very strong in your chart in terms of moving things forward and helping things change and shift. And then next up, we have Venus entering Capricorn. And there she is, our little girl. She's entering Capricorn, also out of bounds. So she's very intense and very passionate as she enters Capricorn. And here again, we have the rise, the angles on the world point in Washington. But now we have Mercury ruling the direction of things. And the planets have shifted a little, but not that much. So that the next day on the 10th, Venus forms a sesquiquadrate to Uranus on a world point. We still have Jupiter on a world point over here. The moon has left the world point that it was on before. But the energy again, this is the companion energy to the Mercury sesquiquadrate Uranus. Now the Venus sesquiquadrates Uranus. Venus also rules Uranus and she is out of bounds. So there's a very intense, passionate energy involved in the sky right now around our decisions, our choices, and our directions that's part and parcel of this change energy. And as Jupiter here hangs out, right about to shift, he shifts on the 21st into, into Aries for 12 years, starting a new 12-year cycle. We're in wrap-up mode. But this also, with sesquiquadrates, they have a stress, but you have to take action. Or there's an action that's taken that can cause some stress. I'm, I'm good with either of them. But again, Venus has now moved into Capricorn and she too is answering to Saturn in Libra's decan. So he is kind of saying, so what are you committing to girlfriend? And she's like, well, Saturn, you know what I'm gonna commit to. So the planets are committing. Remember we were talking about, you didn't have to commit. You, you just kind of explore options, think about things. Now they're stepping forward and they're saying, you, know, you have to commit now, you have to commit. And so the energy is, what am I committing to? Remember, Mars is still retrograde. So the commitment options can be this, that, or the other thing. But you're making a plan. You're going, I'm committing to this. I'm committing to that. I think I will commit to that. I don't know about that anymore. But I want to do this. So that energy of stress around change also. And so this is also an opportunity to say, you know, I think I'm going to leave. I think I have to leave. I think I have to change this up because Uranus is on the North Node, inviting us to change, to take the action we've been talking about, 
and thinking about for the last two years while Saturn and Uranus squared each other, getting us ready for this next 20 years that we began in December after COVID hit, December of 2020. So the energy of the chart sky is really interesting this week. And then um, we're gonna go to our little trusty sheet here. Okay, so those are the big themes for the week. And of course, Mercury and Venus are both gonna finish up their activity with that grand cross in the sky. Sun is gonna move into its first setting it off as a T-square because Ceres has scooched along, but soon he's going to catch up to Ceres you can see he's about 10, you know, he's about uh, nine degrees away. Um, so he's gonna catch up to Ceres, but that will be next week. So this week, the sun is going from uh, 12 Sag into 19 Sag. So planets in your chart between 10 and 19 are going to receive an aspect from the sun in the sign of candles. So there's a nice energy there around, okay, how do we move this forward and create this new chapter? The sun has an interesting aspect with the nodes of fate on the fifth, offering you some choices that you have to adjust to. He has a square to Juno, uh, which is changing his partnership dynamics. That's going to happen on the seventh. He also has a quincunx to Uranus, which is making him change his approach. I didn't put that in, but that quincunx takes place on the seventh also. So that's the um, that's kind of an important boof, kind of a pop energy there. And then we also see, um, you know, as we're moving forward, the sun, the energy of the sky wanting us to expand ideas. Sun is opposite Mars, setting off that, moving into that uh, mutable cross. That happens on the 8th. And then at the end of the week, on the 10th and the 11th, he has some biquintiles to the North Node in Pallas Athena, encouraging him to come up with some new plans. He also commits to some kind of power energy on the 10th, on the December 10th. Mercury this week runs from uh, 26 Sag to six Capricorn, moving pretty quickly. As I mentioned, he enters Capricorn on December 6th. He has um, a hard aspect to the nodes of fate on December 5th, asking him to make some adjustments. His last square, he has a square in, in Sagittarius, he squares Jupiter in Pisces. That takes place on December 6th, and it kind of pushes him into a new relationship with Jupiter. Remember, Jupiter's on a world point here. So as Mercury squares him before he goes into Capricorn, he says to Jupiter, well, you know, this is what I'm, I'm saying, adios, bye-bye. It's a closing square. So it's a psychological integration that Mercury is going to have, and that will happen as he squares Jupiter. Then he enters Capricorn, as we mentioned, on the 6th. He has that weird aspect to Uranus on the 6th, on the evening of the seven, morning of the 7th, unusual news you didn't expect, perhaps a bit shocking, and then probably a bit shocking, frankly. And then uh, he has biquintiles to Juno uh, on uh, the 9th of December, and then he has a semi-square to Saturn, which is stress around the structures of things, and then he has a sextile to Vesta changing homes and hearths at the end of the week. So he's going, as I mentioned, from 26 Sag into zero all the way up to six. Any planets between 26 and six are getting activated by Mercury. Right on his heels, Venus. So she has a square to Neptune on December 4th, and she has a trine to Eris, the goddess of discord, on the 5th, which Mercury had last week. And then she has a square to Ceres that takes place on December 7th, setting off that mutable cross. She has a hard aspect to the nodes of fate on the 8th, which is a companion to the one that Mercury has on the 5th. So Mercury goes through, remember, Mercury's going through everything first. So he has the, oh, this is happening, and he shouts back to Venus, this is coming next. And Venus is like, okay. And then in a, next week, she's going to, well, actually in two weeks, she's going to shout back to the sun, this is coming next. And the sun goes, okay. But right now, Mercury and Venus are kind of hanging out together. Uh, so Venus has a hard aspect to the nodes, similar to the one Mercury had on the 5th. She has hers on the 8th. And then she squares Jupiter right before she goes void, like the Venus did, like Mercury did earlier in the week. She squares Jupiter. So Mercury squared Jupiter on the 6th. She squares Jupiter on the 9th. And she says, Mercury sent me. Kind of like when you're meeting a friend at a club. 
and you, you, you say to the doorman, I'm here, is, is my friend here? You get to the hotel, you get to the reservation. Is my friend here? Yeah, they're in the table on the back. Oh, okay. That kind of energy. So she squares, and then she goes into Capricorn, where she's serious, reliable, and dependable. And then she has her sesquiquadrate to Uranus on the 10th. Shocking news, changes. Uh, Mercury is communication, Venus is women. So we're going to watch for shocking news around women. Hmm, I wonder what that'll be. And Capricorn on a world point. Everybody's going to notice. This week, Mars, not moving too fast, but he is in Gemini out of bounds. And he is square to Juno, the partnership relationship energy. And he has a, a semi-sextile to Uranus on the 8th. So he's got some kind of weird thing going on there too. And he is out of bounds. Um, and he is receiving energy from Venus and Mercury. He received it last week. This week he receives it from the sun where he gets woken up and the sun says, okay, this is where we're headed. Jupiter this week, not much going on. Saturn this week, not much going on. You know, just got the aspects from the other guys, but he's not doing anything himself. And then Uranus has a sextile to Juno that happens on the 8th, which is when they're going to partner with each other. And so Uranus sextiling Juno in, I remember Juno's um, partnership, relationship, how do we work with these things? And then on the 8th, Pluto also has a trine to Ceres uh, in Virgo. So the two of them are working together, making a list, checking it twice, all that kind of stuff. Uh, Vesta has an aspect with the nodes of fate, letting go of stuff, releasing and separating. That's December 10th, probably when my stuff arrives from New York, my 33 boxes that I'm going to be unpacking. And then on the uh, 11th, Ceres has a hard aspect to the nodes of fate. And so that's the energy for the week. Not particularly stressful, but with the planets out of bounds, unexpected things. And with the um, those weird little Mercury Uranus kind of shocking endings or shocking changes or shocking news. And the whole thing with Uranus is you never know quite what it's going to be. That's why he's so much fun. And then right behind Mercury, Venus steps up and she goes, oh, okay, I'm here. And then, you know, in a, in a few weeks, we'll have the sun go through that whole thing also. But it won't be on the world point at that point. It'll be off into other lands. So on to our moon phases. So today, on the 6th of, I've got to go into December. I'm still in November. I was going to say on the 6th, it's daylight savings time. I'm like, nope, I'm in the wrong month. Uh, okay, on the 4th of December. Today, the moon is in Taurus. And Monday also, and it goes void at 2.02 p.m. on Tuesday. And the moon goes void with a sextile to Jupiter. So moon in Taurus is a lovely moon, working, earthy, reliable, dependable. Goes void. It's void for, you know, about an hour and a half, hour and 40 minutes. And it goes into Gemini on the 6th. Mercury goes into Capricorn on the 6th, a little later. So Merc moon's in Gemini Tuesday afternoon from 3.49 East Coast time. Yeah, there's a full moon on Wednesday. On Thursday, the moon's in Gemini, and then it goes void at 1.15, 1.13 in the morning, East Coast time, Friday morning, bright and early. And it goes void with square to Jupiter. Think about it. Moon in Gemini, squaring Jupiter in Pisces, a little over the top, a little interesting information. What does that mean? Then the moon is void for an hour and a half, and it goes into Cancer on the 9th, as Venus goes into Capricorn a little later that evening. And so the moon is in Cancer all day Friday, all day Saturday, the 10th, all day Sunday until 149 when the moon goes void with the moon in Cancer goes void with a trine to Jupiter. So that's got nice closing aspects. And then the moon goes void at 149 p.m. and it enters Leo at 308 on the 11th. And it's in Leo the 11th, the 12th and goes void on the morning of the 13th with a trine to the sun. So the aspects this week are good. The Gemini moon is a little overspendy, you know, because it's moon Mars and it is uh, sun and Sag. So you can overspend or overbuy or overdo. And the closing aspect of the moon in Gemini is a square to Jupiter. And there have been reports this year, everybody's really Christmas shopping a lot. So, you know, if you find yourself spending a little bit more this week, it's in the heavens. Not your problem. The, the stars made you do it. Actually, they didn't. They didn't compel you. They impelled you. you. You could have made a different choice. So no worries there if you do spend a little more. Not a lot of hard aspects this week. Um, the difficult days are uh, probably Tuesday 
just because it's turbulent Tuesday to six, it's not like hard aspects, but it's bumpy. You know, it's kind of like when you go over some potholes. Um, a little bit shocking on the full moon because of the opposition. The full moon happens at 11.08 p.m. and night, you know, so it's you know, when you go out and look at the moon at 11.08 p.m. or, you know, eat your own time at night, you'll be able to see that full moon. And the moon, of course, meets up with Mars. So that's action day. Uh, and then the the Thursday the 8th, not bad. Friday is busy and a little stressed. Okay, we'll deal with it. Not Again, not a horribly difficult day. The energies aren't particularly difficult this week. They're decision-making. And then, again, adjusting energy that we have on the, the 10th, because the moon in Cancer is forming a quincunx to the sun and to Saturn, um, in in the day, so it's forming a little quick finger of God there. Again, you know, it's over the course of the day, so it's first adjusts the sun, then it adjusts to Saturn. Again, not a bad one, but kind of shifting. And then uh, Sunday is nice, you know, good aspects. Moon's opposite Pluto, you know, but that happens every month, not too big. So again, good week. We'll take it. After the last few weeks of change, change, stress, stress. Ah, now we're in. Oh. Really? That was happening? Oh, cool. I can work with that. And with Mercury and Venus in Earth, they want to make decisions. They're not dilly-dallying anymore. They're not, should I do this? Should I do that? To be or not to be? They're going, I am. I'm in. Or they're going, ah, 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 ah. not doing it. Either way, you're going to be fine. Cruise, January 28th to 22nd to the 28th. Uh, it'll be astrology, it'll be Reiki, it'll be crystal healing, it'll be yoga. For those of you who do yoga, I may be starting yoga. I'm going to start moving a little more with this new uh, new energy in the sky. So consider joining us out of St. Lauderdale. Uh, and also a cup full of stars. People like it. This week I had a lot of people going, oh, I get cups full of stars every day. I love it where I go, good morning, good morning, good morning, and I give you the daily breakout of how to use the energy of the day, plus the list of the aspects for the day in depth, so you can work with them and know when they're coming. And then uh, some lately I've been including songs because the energy is so Neptunian up there, and songs sometimes say it better than we can, you know, through the words. You know, and, you, and songs also evoke feelings and emotion because it flows through your body, and because Jupiter's at the last degree of Pisces. You know, I every time I read a chart, every time I look at an aspect, I'm hearing a song lyric. So I'm sharing them. Next up, uh, the Pluto Return of the United States, a 90-minute webinar coming, and the Neptune-Jupiter uh, conjunction, which is activating this week because Neptune is stationed on the degree, and it's now going forward to make your dreams come true, the next 13 years of dreams. So when we look at the energy of the sky, what we're finding this week is uh, a lot of stuff around um, how we're going to change things and how we're going to shift stuff in a whole new way. So it's important for you to be like, oh, okay, this is what I'm doing. This is how I want to do it. And it's a forward motion, full steam ahead energy. I think I just got rid of myself, but we'll try myself again. I don't know. I'll see what it looks like at the end. I, I clicked the button and I'm like, I don't think I'm supposed to do that. Hey, it's that kind of week. So have a great week. Um, remember, you're going to be okay. These are transits. We're through the eclipses. We're stabilizing now. We're getting ready to rock and roll when Jupiter goes into Aries in a couple of weeks on the 21st. In the meantime, it's wrap up, pack up, get it out the door, make commitments. You're, they're still going to modify because Mercury, Mars is in Gemini. Mercury is now in Capricorn, so he wants to commit. He wants you to commit, but also those commitments can change once Mercury goes direct on January 12th. So you can make a commitment, but make it with, provided that when Mercury, when Mars goes direct, we're still good. And if you do it that way, it'll help because then you're not going to feel, you know, like, oh, I don't know if I should say, so, yeah, provisionally I'm in. We'll talk in January. And in January, when, when uh, Mars goes direct, then we know if we're really doing it. But you can say, well, you know, provided nothing, provided the creek don't rise, I'll be there in January. So wishing you a great week and um, fun. Have a good time and happy holidays. We're into the season. Christmas decorations next week. I'll have some pictures of them. Well, I assume the luggage come, the boxes come, which looks like they will. At any rate, have a great time. Bye.